What's up and welcome back. This week I am taking you into my world of upcycling. For anyone who doesn't know, upcycling is... I'll put a definition up on the screen just for the sake of me not rambling. And downcycling is another <laughs> definition because I'm not even quite sure sometimes what downcycling is. It's very broad. But most things are downcycled versus upcycled. Upcycling appeals to me because in my area, and I'm in the Midwest, I'm in Kansas City, in my area we have a ton, ton of textiles that aren't being used, probably in most areas of the United States, actually. But because of this, I can't help but rescue some of these fabrics, right? And hopefully I'm going to be able to build out like another leg of my business that's going to be regenerative and it's going to take these items and re rejuvenate um, them and push them back out into the marketplace. But for starters, I have to kind of experiment and so I'm documenting the process in this upcycle series. So I don't know, what should we call it? Like talking trash? Uh, <laughs> But that's basically what it is. I've accumulated other people's trash and I'm trying to do something with it. So let's get into the projects. All right, the first piece was a simple change, but this is what the sweatshirt looked like before. I like this sweatshirt because it says such and such country club on it. Do I belong to a country club? Hell no. Will I ever belong to a country club? I highly doubt it. Fun fact though, I did work at it. Bella! <laughs> She's like, oh, story time. <sighs> I did work at a country club for, I don't know, maybe eight months or so. And this country club was like off the chains. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. But yeah, it was like rich people gone wild. I mean, seriously. But I love the juxtaposition of like me wearing this preppy country club sweatshirt and then it also kind of reminds me of the days when I was like at school because I went to private school and we dressed preppy and so I kind of like will always sort of like preppy style just because I was a preppy person for so long. All I did was I cut a neckline off a top that I liked. It's got like this a stretch lace and I'm still very new to like working with collars and sewing things in so I basically just did like a stretch stitch all the way around the neckline and then I cut off the hem and then I just added stitches on the side seams so they wouldn't come unraveled from where I cut the hem and that one is done. <laughs> Okay, next up we have a basic denim jacket. There wasn't anything wrong with this. It was from my personal closet. I just kind of wanted to experiment. I was like on Pinterest and you know, if you've seen one of these, you've probably seen like a trillion of them, but basically like somebody cuts out a panel on the back of the denim jacket, adds some sort of detail or paints the back and boom, you have like a denim jacket that's like customized to your personal style. So I was actually attempting to make this for my Poshmark closet. So I took a vintage floral fabric and then I added that in and I kind of was trying to leave it like a little loose so it would be a kind of a voluptuous back panel, but nothing crazy. And then it just needed something. So I took a bow off of a topper dress, I can't remember which, but it was in my upcycle pile, <laughs> which is massive. Um, so yeah, we're working through that. And then I just hand stitched the bow on the back and I'm going to mess around with it a little bit more, but here's how it came out. I think I need to finish off the edges a tiny bit better. Maybe add some of that, um, what's it called? It basically keeps the the fabric from fraying. I think I'm using the wrong word. You don't have to finish the seams on denim because it will fray, that's what I'm trying to say. But 
with like shorts and denim and stuff, I want it to fray. And on some raw edges, I want it to fray. But on the outside of the jacket, I kind of want it to fray because I think that looks cool. But on the interior, I don't want it to fray on the seams. So I think I'm going to add fray check, if that's the right, to the interior seams. And that should be good to go. Okay, so the next one, let's, this one threw me for a loop. I mean, this was the most difficult of them all and I thought it was gonna be super simple. So I have this vintage black, I call it like a lived in crew neck sweatshirt because it has like that naturally washed out faded black, which I like. <laughs> and then the inside is that ultra soft, like vintage worn in sweatshirt feel. If you know, you know. And um, so I'm always drawn to these like vintage sweatshirts when they have those two things, like kind of an overall fade and then the interior is really soft. And I just love that. <laughs> so I wanted to add on um, like this patchwork detailing on the shoulders. I saw some patchwork. I think actually I saw these on Poshmark. It was from Free People and the design was just like bandana patchworks going down the sleeve. If I can find an, um, a picture of the inspiration, I'll put it up here. But I didn't want mine to look exactly like that, but I wanted to find a way to like get that kind of vibe, like this random patchwork eclectic kind of look, but I wanted mine to be on a sweatshirt. I don't know if theirs was on a sweatshirt. It looked like lighter weight, but I wanted mine to be on a sweatshirt for sure. So the hardest part about this was actually very tedious, making those patches, ironing them, stitching them down. Um, actually, a lot of things in sewing are tedious, so that's why I have to be like in the mood to sew, or I do it in like batches, because for me, like if I'm gonna iron one thing, I just want to iron like 50 things and get them all knocked out. If I'm gonna sew one row of straight stitches, I want to just sew a bunch of straight stitches. I just, I want to work like a robot. I just want to get it done in batches because if I work on one project at a time, to me that is just like so, um, it's not a great use of my time because it takes so much longer to do each task individually. But anyway, so I went back and forth on this thing, trying to find the right placement of the patches and then just taking the time to sew them down so that the hardest part was getting them to lay the right way. So I would like put it on my mannequin and then I would pin them down so that it had the right, what do you call that, like draping effect. Because if I just like lay it out flat and pin them down, then when, when I actually put the piece on, it would have like this uh like gaping and so that was the hardest part was like figuring that out and anything that's technical it takes me an extremely long amount of time to figure out and sewing is very technical so i don't take to it it's not like a natural thing by any means but i do find it so worthwhile when i like get the result that i'm going after and i kind of did with this one so this is how it turned out, the finished one. I did go ahead and chop off the hem and made it a raw hem, which I like, I prefer. If nobody buys that one, I will add it to my personal collection. Last, we have this very random ethnic tunic. I believe it was made in India. Okay, so this is gonna be hard to see, but I'll show you like when I redo it. But basically this has embroidered and sequins detailing on the sleeves and up here on the chest. But this has a hole right here. I don't know if you can see that. It has a hole under the arm and then the back is just all plain. So what I'm going to try to do with this piece is I'm going to, I think, cut it into a two piece so cut off the sleeves and then see what it looks like as a tank top and then decide if I just want to shorten the sleeve. Oh no, I'm sorry. It's got two holes. Can you see that? It's got a big hole right here. So definitely we're going to remove the sleeves. <laughs> Sometimes the project decides for you. But yeah, let's just ignore my, my pajama pants. So we'll see. It has this super elaborate sequin detailing across the chest, but not just sequins. It's like, gives kind of like an iridescent 
look like when the light hits it it has like this iridescent shine to it and it also is heavily embroidered and i'm really drawn to pieces like this because it's not my skill set i can appreciate the work that went in to make that neckline the way it was and i love that and i want to reuse it but this tunic it actually had some holes in it I think I knew there was something wrong with it, but I just didn't take the time to look it over because I basically saw the neckline and I was like, good, we're gonna make something out of this. And that's the other bonus about doing this stuff. When you're out thrifting, it opens up your world of like, or estate sale shopping. So many times I'm checking out and they're like, did you see it has a stain here? Or did you see this has a hole? And I'm like, it's all good, it's all good because I'm gonna actually gonna upcycle that piece and then they're like all for it. They're like, oh, that's amazing because they get to get rid of the item and I get to make something with it. So it's kind of like a win-win situation. This one had some holes under the arm bits, which was kind of a surprise. But so what I did was I chopped off the sleeves. I chopped off the, um, like the dress portion. I'm boring Bella, clearly. I chopped it off at the waist and I turned it into a tank top. Where I went wrong with this one, and I will show you here, is I cut it too deeply on the sides. So it's basically going to have to be a layering tank top. Excuse me. If I can ever go back and fix it, maybe add like a lace panel there. But for now, I feel like this is good because this was one that I was just like, by the end, I was just tired of looking at it. I was like, just, just finish it. Don't screw it up completely and we'll be good. Okay, I lied, that wasn't the last piece. The last piece is this oversized flannel shirt that I actually put in one of my other videos. It didn't sell, so I pulled it from my Poshmark closet. I decided I want I want to have it in my own closet. I love like the heaviness and the weight of it, and I feel like it'll be great for kind of like in place of a robe or something. Like when I'm just hanging out at the house and I'm cold, and I can just throw it on like a sh basically like a shirt jacket. Um, so it was a men's shirt, but it's so big it fits almost like a tunic or a long shirt jacket but I wanted to add a little flair to it. And so I was kind of like sifting through all the little remnants and the fabric samples that I have, just these really small swatches. And I found that I absolutely loved these, um, like pays, it's like a blue paisley and I like the effect kind of like Robert Graham does on his dress shirts with the men's shirts where he has like the flip cuff and underneath it has this flare, but I wanted mine to just have the flare like on the outside and you don't roll it up, it just always has that. And so that's what mine looks like. I just, the hardest part about that one was just cutting everything to be the same size. So I did the method where you just roll it on top of itself and then you cut like, like I cut the sleeve and then I rolled it over and then I used that sleeve to measure where to cut the next sleeve. And then when I was sewing the pieces on, um, I just tried to match the best I could. It might not be perfectly symmetrical. But this was actually my favorite of all of them. So I saved that till the end. Mm -hmm. 